It is my pleasure to introduce our esteemed chief guest for today's event, a well-renowned President's Council with over 40 years of legal practice in Sri Lanka. He's a President's Council and past president of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka and holds an honors degree in law from the Faculty of Law of the University of Colombo. He was the president of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka during 2015 and 16, and 2016 and 17. Our chief guest specializes in industrial, corporate, banking, and intellectual property law. He has also taken a keen interest in areas of public law, actively involved in public interest litigation and issues of constitutional law and governance. Apart from his legal practice, our chief guest possesses a management background and has followed the global leadership program conducted by INSEAD in collaboration with the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka. He is a director in the Law and Society Trust and a member of the Center for the Study of Human Rights, CSHR, University of Colombo, Faculty of Law, and a member of the Faculty Board of the Faculty of Law. We are honored to have such a distinguished lawyer and an academic as our chief guest today. Please join me in welcoming President's Council, Mr. Jeffrey Alagaratnam, to deliver the convocation address. Vice Chancellor, esteemed members of the stage, the young graduates of 2023, and all you proud parents, well wishers, and friends, and the academics. It is my pleasure to be here today, though I should say it took me a while to come from Bambalapitiya to Malabi, a good 45 minutes by car. But we hope that Kanchana will bring down the price of petrol so it will be much cheaper coming here in future. And we also hope that there would be an LRT, whether it comes from Japan or whether it comes from China, it matters not, which will ease your travel time and help you to save much valuable time, at least reading in the LRT rather than struggling in buses and public transport. Anyway, I am here today, and I, as a lawyer, have been given the privilege of speaking to you who are specializing in a very powerful field, information technology, cyber security. These are the things of the future, and you're already there, and you are the future, and this is something you have to realize. You have an important role to play. And therefore, I think, because if you look at information technology, it eats into every field, whether it's medicine, whether it's the arts, whether it's even in law. You know that even sometimes we predict judicial decisions using computers and jury metrics. So your field, your sphere, touches on every aspect of life. So that what I would like to leave with you as a message is for you to realize your importance. You are young people. You're going out into the world. You have a lot to do. I know the initial years are a struggle. You have to find your footing. You have to find your future. You have to reach for the stars. And you have to go for the gold. And that's your immediate concern. Your concern is also to do well, to earn well, to establish yourself. But what I would like to impress upon you is that you are also a profession. Remember, we always spoke of those days, we talk of doctors, engineers, and lawyers as professionals. But we forget that today the scope of professionals has expanded beyond. And therefore, as a profession, what is it that is expected of you and me? Okay, it is competence, your knowledge, your ability to... Pro because what do you mean by a professional? We have professors here. 
They profess because they have a certain knowledge, they have a certain capability, and they hold themselves out as reliable people who can tell you what, it, what is right, what is wrong, what is correct, and how things should be done. And that is what is important of a profession. It's not a mere job. A job is just to go and make money. Money is important. But a profession calls for more. It calls for competence, knowledge, above all, integrity. Because you should be able to advise your clients of what is possible, what is right, what is wrong. And that is why I say, in your hands is also a dangerous instrument. A dangerous instrument which can make or break the world. We find hacking into banks. We have hacking into the Pentagon. We have the computers being used for warfare. Those days it was you send soldiers on horses to fight. Today, warfare can be at the press of a button. And so, it's a very powerful field. It's a very powerful uh, commitment that you're making. And so, what my central message to you is, realize that you're not merely doing a job. You're not merely going out to make money and to become famous. Those are important. Those are good. And it's especially good as you young people are. While I congratulate you on what you have achieved, hard work, well supported by your parents, your guardians, or those who looked after you. It's not easy today for education. It's a struggle, and especially with all the competition. Even in the IT field, it's very competitive. But you are the people who are capable of innovation, change. And change should be for the better. Change should not be for the worse. And that is why, unfortunately, you know that the origins of IT industry was it's in the Silicon Valley, and you've heard of Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. In fact, they fought that each, the other guy stole his stuff. And the story of Bill, uh, Steve Jobs is very interesting. If you recall, you all have heard of Xerox. How many have heard of Xerox? Photocopying machines are called Xerox. Xerox was in New York, and this was in the 70s during the hippie power, the Vietnam War, when these people with full suits, dressed up in big limousines in New York, were having this company with photocopy machines. And there were these young chaps in California, in the Silicon Valley, who thought, brought out these new ideas of the computers. And so they wanted to sell this idea to Xerox about the importance that computers are for the future. So they went for the interview to Xerox in New York, where all these guys were with full suits coming in limousines, whereas these chaps who started the computer were in denims, colored shirts, colored ties, long hair. So what did they say? Those guys said, these are mad guys. We don't know what they are thinking about. We don't want, I mean, I don't think they'll go far. And Xerox lost the opportunity. And, uh, it is also told that it was Steve Jobs who went and listened to the people in the Silicon Valley, these young chaps who had the new ideas, and he used those ideas. So really, Steve Jobs stole, but I'm not asking you to steal. As a professional, you have to be honest. You have to be competent. So that Steve Jobs, and, and if you remember right, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs fought, saying that each Apple and Microsoft, saying that this guy stole my copyright or my patents, and there was a, they had to settle it. Of course, now both the guys towards Steve Jobs is dead. Michael Ga William, uh, uh, Gates is, Bill Gates is doing a lot of charity. <laughs> so that is the other aspect of a profession, competence and also service. Because remember, you're not only earning money, you're serving society. Any profession, whether it's me, the legal profession, whether it's you, the IT professional, whether it is the engineering profession, you have one member here who has come from Canada and who is also lecturing here. So you have people from all over the world, engineers, doctors, lawyers, it's not only them who are professionals. So realize your importance, realize your role, realize the values that you should have, and that is very critical. If you look at Steve Jobs, if you, I don't know whether you've read this book by, how many of you have read the book by Isaacson? on Steve Jobs, the biography. 
I don't think many, no? In that, Steve Jobs quotes, he quotes Picasso, the famous Spanish painter. He says, good artists, good artists copy. So if I'm a good artist, I copy somebody else's work. But he said, great artists, great artists, they steal. <laughs> that is Picasso's. And that's why the computer industry at the original was piracy, stealing other people's ideas. But we have to move away from that. We can use another person's idea, but we can't just copy it. We have got to develop, go further. That's why you are innovative. So those, and, and in that trend, we see that you should know that the law, the, just as much for me, the law is only a tool to serve, to, uh, to accomplish a certain standard and serve. For you also, money is important, your status is important, your name is important, you should do well. We have special merit people who took awards today. But as a professional, there is something beyond. We have to set the values, we have to set the standards, we have to set the ethics. And that is critical for anybody. And more so today, I don't want to sound political, but we have a void of leadership. We have a void of people to tell us. There are very few people to show us what is right or wrong, to tell us what is right or wrong, what is done and what is not done, what should be done. And therefore, it is up to you. 75, we said our country has had 75 years of independence. We are respected for our IT abilities by foreign countries. But have we built up a culture, a good culture, of fairness, rightness, and doing the correct thing. And like in the law, they say, if, I, if you are a crooked lawyer, you will earn fast, but you will burn out fast. <laughs> you will burn out fast, because for me, if, if, uh, if you cheat and lie in your courts, your reputation will spread far and wide as a con lawyer. So don't be a con professional. That's one of the messages I would like to give you. And I say the future is yours. As far as I'm concerned, I have more past than future. But realize your role to play today. And remember that what is expected of you is more ability to help society. Because we have had so much of scientific development, but how is it that this whole world stood still with the coronavirus? How, how, why? Is science the answer to everything? Is technology the answer to everything? Or have we got it right or wrong? So those are, there are deeper, deeper values. There are deeper standards. And that is something that we've got to remember. And you go out into the world. I wish you all the best and all success. But remember that you got to make a difference, each and every one of you, in your own way. And as Steve, and then in this, Country. And one thing good about computers, it levels the whole field. Whether you're of any race, religion, or culture, it doesn't matter. Your competence, your ability is what matters. You as a person, your intelligence, your application, remember success, as has always been said, is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration, or the idea. Right? So for that, you've got to work your initial years Keep at it, stay the course, contribute to society, and guide this nation in the correct path. And as Steve Jobs says in his book, or his famous quote, he says, the people who are crazy enough to change the world, the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the people who really do so. So be crazy enough to think that you can change the world. Each man's contribution counts, each woman. And I find today, in your midst, of course, in the law faculty, if you go there, you will find 60% to 70% of ladies admitted. In the legal profession, it is, I find, of course, here I find, I was told it's about 40%. But our population is 52% women. So I would like to see more women in the forefront then we can relax in the back seat. So that what are the things we got to do is we got to give the woman her rightful place because in our society, we have always thought that the male was superior, which is wrong, okay? And so we've got to, it's not a question of only respecting gender, respecting each other. 
and go out. Good luck. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. All the best and make the most of it. Thank you.